go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain Jesus Christ is born go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go go tell it on the mountain Jesus Christ is born when I I sought both night and day. I asked the Lord to help me, and He showed me the way. Go, go tell it on the mountain, over, over the hills and everywhere. Go, go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. Our scripture reading is Isaiah 62, 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. May we come before God in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, God of great spirit, God of our individual spirits, Hear us today as we come into your presence. We come to you first of all offering prayers of thanksgiving for the blessings that you have given to us. We thank you especially for the gift of human love, the gift of friendship, the gifts of family love, which you bless, which you have given to us, and with which you fill us as we remember how important family relationships and human love were to Jesus himself today. We again thank you that you have blessed us with these kinds of experiences in our lives. We thank you too, dear God, that you have given us a sense of being called. You probably could have created a perfect and complete world. Instead, you chose to allow us the great privilege of having a part in helping build your world and help it grow. Sometimes, God, it seems that the calling is too great. Sometimes it seems that it is too difficult for us. But we also know that even as you call, even as you perhaps even assign tasks to us, you also fill us with your Holy Spirit. You also bless us and enable us. You infuse us with your own 
power and make it possible for us to be the servants that you want us to be. We ask that you would help us always to be open to that. Help us to be sensitive to that. Help us never to close our own hearts and our own minds to whatever message you have for us, a message of encouragement, a message of call, a message of sharing of love. Help us always to hear. Grant us the courage to say yes to you when you call. We pray, dear God, that you would be with us in times of greatest need, whether it is our own personal problem, whether it is dealing with issues of health, whether it is dealing with the difficulties of the world around us, we ask that you would bless us. We ask that you would bless those around us. We pray your spirit and your strength upon those whose decisions affect the lives of other people. And we ask that they might act in accord with your will as well. God, we ask now that you would hear us as we join together and as we pray together the prayer that Jesus prayed. Our Father, who art, who art, art in heaven, heaven how would be our name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from John 2, verses 1 through 11. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour is not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there, there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. 
when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. 1 Corinthians 12, 1-11 Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come and see. This week's scripture readings from the lectionary are a collection that fit very well together. From the First Testament, we have a passage from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah's great love for his homeland was undeniable. He prophesied about a day when Zion, also called Israel, would be stable, shall no more be termed desolate. The prophet used a strong metaphor describing Zion as a young man who was a builder marrying a young bride and that together they would create beauty. Then comes the responsorial psalm, Psalm 36, a natural outgrowth of the spousal love mentioned earlier in Isaiah 62, where love is portrayed as God's steadfast love for us. Some of the verses in the psalm deal with the opposites of wickedness and sin, but the lectionary compilers cherry pick the more positive verses of this psalm that help illustrate the main point for the second Sunday after Epiphany, that God gives abundantly to us and that we feast in the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. We are connected to God. The punch of these complementary passages is enhanced by today's gospel selection from early in the Gospel of John. Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, had made his entry into public ministry, baptizing many people who lived in the Galilee region in the Jordan River. According to the gospel, John announced the coming of the Messiah Jesus when he himself was confronted by Pharisees who thought he, John the Baptist, was proclaiming himself as the Messiah. But John the baptizer told the authorities and the crowd of seekers that the Messiah was the one coming after him. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This exchange is to have taken place in Bethany near the Jordan River where John had been baptizing. The next day, the gospel reports that John saw Jesus coming toward him in the distance and he proclaimed, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John said that while he had been baptizing with water, he was always on the lookout for Jesus to come and be revealed 
as their Messiah. We know the story of how Jesus came to John and asked his cousin to baptize him. John had testified, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is revealed as that person. According to the gospel, over the next two days, Jesus met John's disciples and he began to gather his own coterie together to support his impending ministry. These men were largely fishermen who cast their nets on the Sea of Galilee. The people who gathered were curious to find out more, and so they responded to that invitation to come and see. On the third day after the arrival of Jesus, the Gospel writer records the details of the wedding feast in Cana, a city along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. John's is the only canonical gospel where this story is found. Jesus attended the wedding as did his mother Mary. You probably remember the scenario. At some point early in the festivities, the wine ran out. Mary was distressed over the embarrassment as she reported the problem to Jesus. Jesus at first brushed her off saying this wasn't her concern or even his, but he instructed the servants anyway to pour water into six stone jars. When the water was changed into high quality wine, this not only salvaged the reputation of the wedding hosts, but it also became known as the first of the miracles or signs in John's expression of the ministry of Jesus. It was the first of several signs that seemed so incredulous. How could they be true? Later, they would be heavily debated. From the prophet Isaiah and the psalmists to the author of the Gospel of John, the constant thread has been the activity of the Spirit of God in our faith history. The Apostle Paul who wrote a generation after the death of Jesus, as early as 56 AD, never knew him personally. He was dealing with demons that affected his own faith. After persecuting early followers of the Jesus movement, he was confronted by an event that changed him forever, that converted him to a lifelong mission to bring Jesus to communities far and wide. He traveled to many places in Asia Minor. After his visits, he communicated with the newly formed Christian communities through instructive letters. These no doubt are responsible for the expansion of the early Christian community throughout the Mediterranean, well beyond Palestine. In his first letter to the Corinthians, a community that Paul preached how the Spirit is the bearer of gifts and services that the community may provide for the common welfare. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The pastoral advice provided by Paul helped to expand the church to the Gentile world. His travels and follow-ups with the epistles began a process of forming teachers for the next generations. Through his words, Paul tried to reveal God's nature, particularly ways to identify the Spirit of God who inhabits each person. Paul's zeal helped to shape the early evangelical movement, transforming it from a synagogue-based religion to a faith that was inclusive, way beyond its roots. Paul and those who came after him targeted the different gifts for ministry that are given by the Holy Spirit to individuals. Within the lection for today, we can understand that the gifts of wisdom, healing, prophecy, and others were gifts to be discerned and prayed for, that they would be manifested according to God's leading in the Spirit. Now, written so long ago, we can be tempted to dismiss the relevance of these texts, but they are markers of wisdom for all ages. The entire journey through the post-Christmas time, known as the Weeks of Epiphany, provide a sustained movement of discernment in our call and commitment to minister to others. How is God's Spirit nudging you to use your gifts? 
Are you an activist, a compassionate caregiver, a natural teacher who can lift children and adults out of illiteracy? What might be stirring in you that could be a calling from God through the Spirit? May we pray for the gift to hear that stirring and act on it. We have received so much from God's bounty. How might we see more of God's light and bring light to others? Come and see. With your friends, this fountain of life, O oh God, in your light, we will see light. Come and see. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall is that none of us can do everything. Some of us can sing in such a way that it draws people in and fills the room with the Spirit. Others, not so much. Some of us can preach the Word and people's hearts will be changed and people's minds will, will expand to understand all that God is saying. Others, not so much. But there is one thing that we can all do. And that is to dedicate whatever gifts, whatever talents, and whatever resources God has given us to making God's kingdom a reality. We all have gifts. We all have talents. We all have resources. And that brings us to the time of offering. That's something that all of us can do. All of us right now can dedicate not just our physical resources, the money that we have, although we do need that, but we can also dedicate those things that God has placed in us and given to us as a way of making God's kingdom a reality. The time of offering is a spiritual time. It is a spiritual discipline. It is a dedication of all that God has so graciously poured into our lives that we may give back to God. Let's pray. This offering of ourselves and our resources we dedicate to you. It's more than money we know. It is a promise to make available to the Spirit every gift that you have given. So that your kingdom might reign on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in your holy name above all others. Amen. Today we've heard about gifts that we give and things that we can do, whether we sing or dance. We even heard about Jesus turning water into wine. But today we come to this table and are presented with a gift that keeps giving. God loved us so much that he said, 
for these people who don't know each other, who don't even fully understand who I am, I will give them the gift of life eternally. And so with this bread and this cup, through the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been given a gift that we can never give back. We can only share with others. Today, we remember the gift and how awesome a treasure it is that we have. So no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, no matter what place we may even be in mentally, we are given a gift, a reminder that we are never alone, a reminder that we are forever loved, a reminder that God loves us and gives gifts to his children. Let us pray. Oh God, today we give you thanks for this gift for the gift of the table that brings us together and makes us one. For the connection that now creates us as heirs with you. God, we thank you for the obedience and the life of your son, Jesus. Who, when the cup could have passed from him, said, not his will, but your will be done. Father God, we thank you for this bread that represents his body and for this cup that represents his shed blood, that is our gift from you, that continues to give back to us. For this, O oh Lord, we give thanks. Amen. It was on the night when Jesus was with his disciples, and he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Eat in remembrance of me. And afterwards, he took the cup and he said, This is the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. That as often as you drink it, you do show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. The table has been set. Won't you come? Dear friends, let us go today in peace to love and to serve and to discern what God wants for us and how the Spirit of God is leading us to use our gifts to minister to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.